Hi, my name's Jason Mears and I'm a lead architect and CTO ambassador for VMware based out of the UK. And I'm going to talk about VMC on AWS or VMware Managed Cloud on Amazon Web Services. So the presentation is not going to be a very technical presentation. It's more aimed at business leaders and the C-suite. And it's going to be an overview of the business benefits of VMC and AWS rather than any technical detail. And we're going to start with how an application or a service is actually deployed to an end user. So we're going to start with everything that the IT department has to do on the left hand side in order to get an application to an end user on the right hand side. So first of all, uh, before we can even think about building a data center, we're going to need a location and a building, then a number of people who can do things like maintenance on that building and security of that building uh, before we can even think about putting the, the basics of a data center in there. So once we've got that, building portion sorted out we now need to think about power and cooling and cabling and if you talk to lots of IT managers uh, you'll find that most of them are now struggling with power and cooling more than any other aspect of the things we're going to draw along this top line. So once you've got that power and cooling and cabling we can then look at things like servers and servers in racks so we've got the building at this point here we've got all the power and cooling and environmental infrastructure and connectivity We've now got racks full of servers, and on top of those servers, we're going to stick a hypervisor. So once we've got all of those things, the next thing that we can do is then build a virtual machine. And on top of that virtual machine, we can then um, build another operating system. And once we've got the operating system, we can then look at putting something on top of that, like a dependent, like dependencies. So that might be something like uh, libraries or .NET Framework or any of those other dependencies that we have for the other services and applications we're going to build on top. So that's the whole thing from start to finish, from from very basics of you know the land and the building that we need, all the way through to delivering that service and application to an end user. And if I was to summarise that, I would say that that you know breaks down into managing the building managing power cooling and connectivity, managing servers, racks and hypervisors, and managing VMs and operating systems, and then finally managing dependencies for services and applications. So that's how IT would look at the delivery of an application. But if you stop to think about which part of that actually delivers business value, which of those things are valuable to the business, which of those things differentiate the business from its competitors, I would argue that it's probably only these last two here. It's the services and applications you deliver to your end users or you deliver to your customers that actually provides business value. So given all the things that we do, all this stuff from, from here to here, it seems wrong that the value is only actually represented here in the very last part of that, that all this other stuff is just a means to an end. So for most people, um, that's that's how the data center is now and that's how it looks. Um, it may be that you have a landlord um, or you lease your building, in which case maybe the location building and the maintenance is taken care of of somebody else, but you still spend the majority of your time looking after things like power, cooling, cabling, server racks, hypervisors and virtual machines and even patching operating systems. So the question here is, if the, val the business value is only at this end, but IT end up doing all of this stuff, you know, kind of, kind of what's the value in IT doing all that stuff on the left-hand side? And I guess the question is, if we, we as a company, VMware, were able to free up the time and effort required to manage all the stuff on the left-hand side so that your IT department could start to focus on things like business value, you know, kind of what would that mean for your business? So the people that manage all this stuff here are probably the people that have the most uh, intimate knowledge of your business logic, your business applications and business services, yet they spend most of the time doing housekeeping and maintenance, when really they could be working on things that deliver actual business value. So that might be delivering a new service to end users or customers, that might be delivering a new application or mobile application to a customer, but I guess what we're saying is a very small fraction of the IT department's time is actually spent on things that deliver business value. So if you can imagine what it would be like if we could take away that part of it for you so that you could just focus on virtual machine, operating system, dependencies, servicing applications. We're not entirely there, but we've at least made the gap smaller between what IT do and what delivers value. So I should probably explain how we're going to get rid of that box in the middle here. And to do that, I need to do a little bit of a history lesson. So I'm going to start with 
vSphere or vSphere ESXi, which is a hypervisor. It's something that takes physical hardware or physical computer equipment and turns it into virtual hardware or virtual computer equipment. And what that simply means is that we can run virtual machines on top of physical servers. And because we can get um, more virtual machines on a physical server than we could do without our software, we, we have an efficiency there. So to, to put that in simple terms, one of my customers has 40 servers running ESXi. If they didn't run our software, ESXi, that 40 servers would have to be 600 servers to deliver the same level of performance and applications and number of services from the same amount of equipment. So we get more out of a, a small amount of hardware um, and that, that feature there is called a hypervisor. And we tended to use that over a single site. We then came out with a product called Cloud Foundation, which adds to our software-defined compute. We've now got software-defined storage and software-defined networking. And when we have all of those things together, we call that Cloud Foundation because it is really is a building brick for building cloud data centers or a hybrid cloud and multi-cloud environments. So once you've got Cloud Foundation, you can start to run IT between multiple sites or multiple data centers. So in this example, it's still two on-premise data centers, data center one, data center two. The next thing we've done is work on something called VMware Managed Cloud or VMC. So in this example, we've got VMware Managed Cloud on AWS or VMC on AWS. And now we can extend our applications and services not, not only between our own data centers, but also into the hybrid cloud or public cloud. So this is the technology we use um, to give you one seamless platform for delivering applications and services, regardless of whether it's in your building or a cloud provider or a public cloud provider. So just to put make that a little bit more realistic or, or to kind of put some context on that, if I treat this as being all the applications and services that I'd like to deliver to my end users or customers, and these on the left hand side are run out of data center one on cloud foundation, and the other two, uh, sorry, the other three applications here are run on Data Center 2 on Cloud Foundation. If I was to add VMC and AWS as a third option, what I'm able to do is because it's exactly the same software, Cloud Foundation, the same layer or the same platform that I build applications on, I can add new applications here. So I could build a new application on VMC and AWS and it would work in exactly the same way as my on-premise applications and it would even look like it's the same network or the same data center as everything else is in. But not only that, I can also take applications that have existing applications I've got that are already running in one of my data centers and I can move them over to VMC and AWS. So this is what we call hybrid cloud because we've got the same software capability and the same set of applications running across on-premises data center as well as cloud-based data centers. And I can even step, take this a step further and say, the reason I may have gone to AWS might be to expand or to burst, but it might be because data center two needs replacing or decommissioning. But once I've moved my applications, it's a simple task just to decommission that data center. And I still have two data centers, but only one is on-premise and one is in the cloud. So I've satisfied this common platform for applications. I've satisfied this single agile platform for the IT department, but I've also enabled cloud or hybrid cloud from a business perspective. So that's an example of how you can move applications around or provide the same experiences on premise as you, but, but with a cloud provider or VMware cloud on AWS. So if we go back to that original picture that we had where we said, we've probably already got rid of the building and VMC and AWS allows us to get rid of the power cooling, cabling, server racks, and hypervisor. We're now just left with this, which is the virtual machine, operating system, dependencies, services, and applications, and the value being here. So most applications you have now are going to have to continue to stay on this model. We call it the virtual machine model or the virtual model. So all these things you have now are sat on virtual machines. The modern way of building applications is to use something called cloud native applications. So here we've got things like Docker and Kubernetes. And what that does is when we move to cloud native applications, we skip much of the, the headaches from virtual machines and operating systems. So now we package up the service and the application on its own with the bare minimum number of dependencies. So 
when I just have dependencies, services and applications, that's something like Docker and Kubernetes and a cloud native application. When it includes the virtual machine and the OS, that's a traditional more of a, of a virtual machine based application or service. So we can move all of your applications as they are like this now, but moving forward, we've also got a platform for cloud native applications and things like Docker and Kubernetes and cloud computing going forward. So that's my simple explanation of what VMC and AWS is, and more importantly, what the business benefits are of VMC and AWS and, and business value, and how we can try and get the, the things that IT do to be as close, closely aligned as possible to actual business value. So I hope you find that useful, and thank you very much for your time.